In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to test the uh, starter relay or uh, any relay. This is what the uh, classic or traditional starter relay looks like. It's got two big terminals here on each side, two little terminals here. And on uh, the next video, I will be doing the disassembly of this so that you can see exactly how it works inside. And uh, as you can see up here, there's some sort of like rivet, and this is connected to ground. Here it says 12 volts, or just 12V. But uh, so what? What the? Uh, what is a relay? Uh, in simple terms, it's just a switch, or to be more a little bit more precise, it's a uh, an electromagnetic switch which means electromagnetic just means electricity and magnetism electron electro uh, <clears throat> electric and magnet just remember it like that that's how i remembered it just makes and of course what you have in your home for example is for the lights you just have a mechanical switch which means you actually need some mechanical movement to uh turn it on or off so here, obviously, you always need some sort of um, mechanical movement, but it's here you're actually using a magnet to turn on the switch. So you're actually turning on the magnet, which then turns on the switch. And, uh, well, why would you do that? Uh, to be, in simple terms, because people are cheap, right? They're trying to save money. And uh, so, as you can see, th these things, they usually go on batteries. And uh, the starter is the uh, item on the car that uses the most electricity. The uh, higher amps, if you will. Uh, you have, and you also have the uh, heater and the uh, air conditioning. And those do take a up, up a lot of electricity too but not nearly as much as a starter that's why these pins here they're so thick right so if you were to just have an electric you can't have it's fine having a little bit of electricity going through a thick wire but you can't have a lot of electricity going through a thin wire so if you do that it'll just melt the wires right I had a uh, I had a guy once, and he tried uh, connecting. A, uh, he just got a, a little piece of uh, house wire, like for for house wiring. I think uh, what was it? Maybe uh, twenty? No, yeah, maybe twenty gauge or something like that. And he connected it to. He tried wiring the uh, starter like that, and obviously, it uh, when as soon as he turned on the ignition. It's just, uh, you just heard a little spark and obviously it melted the wire. So basically for a lot of electricity, a lot of amperage, you need a thick wire. Now I, I sort of used to get confused because I thought, well, for lots of like voltage, you need thick wire. But no, just, just look at your high voltage wires that go uh, across like on the streets, like the uh, main lines, if you will. They're not really thick, and considering that they're usually uh, carrying like ten thousandths of volts on them, sometimes ten, thirteen thousand, or even somewhere even twenty-two thousand, and they're not really thick. And uh, I'm not going to go into a lot more detail of why that happens, but basically, for batteries, you need thick wires. Now, the ignition switch is kind of far from the battery so if you were to just have a normal switch mechanical switch which just goes like this just through contacts like that uh, you'd need really thick wire going into the ignition switch then going back to the starter plus you need to have a pretty strong ignition switch itself right so in order to save that, in order for you not to have to do that, instead what they do is you have these two little terminals here and they turn on an electromagnet which then 
close the switch inside here and this switch inside here does have you know uh, pretty strong uh, pretty thick terminals on it or just uh, a point so that's all it does so just imagine my hand here being the contact point or uh, rather the uh, like a little bar and then each side of my fingers here is a terminal obviously here they're connected to my hand but just imagine that they're disconnected this one comes from the battery this one goes to the starter so what happens is inside in the middle here there's the electromagnet which is uh, controlled by these two pins here and when that magnet is turned on it attracts this top bar here and it closes it like that a lot of electricity to flow through it from the battery to the starter right so that's how they why they do this so that they don't have to use a uh, big heavy-duty um, ignition switch and they also save money on the wires because these thick wires going to the battery they're very expensive right so that's all it is they're just saving money right um, so this this particular switch uh, there's basically three terminals here you don't see the other one because the other one is basically the ground itself so in order to turn these things on um, it's it's got to be there's two ground terminals here which is this one and uh, either one of uh, this one here either one of them doesn't really matter actually I think on this one it matters so what I usually why the reason they have this is if you I think I've done a video of my DeSoto and you actually have I actually insulated this part here this steel part and used this ground terminal running through the generator and uh, what that ha what that uh, allows is um, the car will not start if there's a break in the generator. Now, if you just have the ground coming through directly to the body of the car, the car will start and it'll run on the battery, and then you'll you know you'll drive for I don't know five ten minutes, then you'll get stranded. So it's really good to have the ground coming in through here and through the uh, generator. Or, or you can also have it through the alternator uh, somehow, and uh, so that the car, if, if there's a break in the wire in the alternator and the field coils or something, the car will not start, which is pretty cool. But uh, anyways, so there's two types of switches basically. You have an on switch, normal on, and a normal off switch. So in here, uh, you don't want the starter to be on all the time. You want it to be off most of the time. You only want it to turn on for a few seconds or actually for a second. Just when the car starts, then you want it to turn off. So the normal position for it is off. So there's a spring that keeps this top bar apart. And then when you turn it on, the magnet attracts and, and it closes like that. So some switches are the opposite. You have an off switch. Uh, or a non switch rather normal on and the normal on switch is just the opposite it's normally on and then uh, electricity is able to pass through it and then it only turns off when you press it so it, then it'll do the opposite you'll have an electromagnet maybe on the other side here and once you and it'll separate so bottom line these these two terminals we're not supposed to have electricity coming through them and as I as per my previous test I should expect electricity flowing through it which means that the spring here inside is damaged how do you test that well I'm just gonna connect one end of it to the uh, battery charger and if I get a spark on here once I touch it like that obviously it's off now but if I get a spark that means we have electricity flowing through it even though I have nothing um, you know powering the electromagnet here you only need don't turn the uh, battery charger up to like 75 or even 12 amps you just need a little bit of electricity just a little bit of amperage just to test it and as you see sure enough you have electricity th flowing through it 
So the starter relay is damaged. Now there are some other fancy relays that have like a four sets of terminals or you know but the uh, principle is the same and the vast majority of them is just four terminals so you know uh, if you're if you need some sort of replacement uh, relay don't bother with any of uh, buying like uh, original equipment especially if you have like uh, just buy any any sort of relay it doesn't really matter which you can even use these big ones here right which would be kind of funny for like I know some relays for little light bulbs and things are only that big it would be funny to have something big like that but uh, it's it's very odd that this went bad these things are supposed to be really heavy duty but we'll disassemble it and I'll see what the hell is happening to it and uh, over here you have the S terminal which stands for switch over here you have the I terminal oh, pardon me and uh, in most cars the I terminal is not used I'm just gonna try to figure out what happens when I uh, activate these two let's just take a quick look Normally it's like that. Yeah, you're, just, you're supposed to hear some sort of clicking. I'll just uh, drill out these rivets and we'll see what's happening inside. But uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, the uh, spring that holds these things apart has gone bad somehow. Now the other problem that you can have on these things is the opposite. You can have the opposite problem. The electromagnet does not work so you're, the switch is always off and you're unable to turn it on. And basically, you just have the opposite, just have no electricity flowing through here, even though these two are connected. Even though you have electricity through the uh, electromagnet inside. Right, now I'm sure you can find some cool schematics in, in, on the internet, but we're just going to disassemble this. And uh, it would be cool to see what's, you know, take a look inside. Especially this other terminal, which. Um, I want to see exactly how it goes to because sometimes you could have this terminal wired to the bar so that it only turns on momentarily when this is on or you could have it more permanently on connected to another terminal such as the uh, battery terminal um, that way you could use this as a uh, as another um, positive terminal for some other switch or whatever you know right so that's how uh, these things work and uh, you'll be able to f find this out more uh, understand it better once I have this uh, disassembled you're welcome for watching